If you were a kid like me, you primarily played console games. To this day, I'm not too knowledgeable on the modding scene and whatnot, even though I have a more than capable PC, and that means I've missed out on a lot of fun game alterations over the years, and I'm still trying to play catch up. The funny thing is, there used to be a practice of including game alterations within a game, and I am of course talking about the noble cheat code. A tradition in game development for many years, often used for QA testing purposes to help the testers try out specific parts of a game, but the codes were left in because they were often more trouble than they were worth to take out. These little nuggets became a staple of video games for many years as something to play around with when the game had worn out its welcome. A certain thrill of the hunt in discovering and playing around with them that excited people like me growing up. Like, you can't tell me that discovering that the Crash games let you play Spyro demos and vice versa back in the day wasn't the hypest sh** ever. Unfortunately, cheat codes have gone the way of the dinosaur these days ever since paid DLC and post-launch patches started to become an increasing practice. Because why the hell should we have fun tidbits for free in the game when we can just sell them to you for extra profit? In this case, I'm happy to be an old man yelling at a cloud, and it's unfortunate because people younger than me may not be able to fully understand just how intrinsic cheat codes were to the culture of gaming at a time. However, the kings of the cheat code would be Rockstar Games, as it's almost a tradition for them to include absolutely bonkers amounts of cheats in every game they develop. Going back to the early days of 3D all the way up to the modern day, and in no other series have they been so gung-ho in adding cheat codes of every variety to than Grand Theft Auto. So in that spirit, I wanted to take this time to pay tribute to, in my opinion, the game with possibly the greatest selection of cheat codes in history, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. But before we start, many will know that this game has a hunger meter. It's one of the more annoying aspects of the game, and you can actually die if you go too long without food. There's a cheat code to turn it off, and I wish real life had that, but until then we have today's sponsor, Cook Unity. Cook Unity is the first chef-to-customer platform delivering freshly made pre-selected meals straight to your door every week. You can pick from hundreds of different meals or let them choose for you based on your taste preferences. They're easy to prepare with most being ready in 5 minutes or less. Plans start from as little as $11 dues per meal. They're flexible and so you can order as few as 4 meals or as many as 16 meals a week and it's commitment free so you can skip a delivery, pause your subscription or cancel at any time, no questions asked. I will admit, I'm a very busy person, so there's no greater convenience for me than being able to have good food that's easy and quick to prepare. And this is something that Cook Unity prides themselves on. Personally, I got myself a grilled chicken and quinoa bowl from Andres Mendez, crispy sesame crusted chicken tenders with cauliflower mash by Ruben Garcia. Personally though, I think I might start with Pat Lafrida's backyard barbecue chicken, just like mom used to make. And hey, if you're not convinced yet, how about an exclusive discount code? You can follow the link in the description for cookunity.com slash bacon50 or go to cookunity.com and use my code bacon50 at the checkout so you can experience the quality and convenience of Cook Unity for 50% off your first order. I'm Gregory Garrison and I approve this message. Thank you to Cook Unity for sponsoring today's video. Alright, back to you. The reason I brought up the mods discussion in the beginning of this video was because San Andreas is one of the most heavily modded games of all time, even to this day. Which is in no small part due to how versatile the gameplay engine is. You can tell the game devs agreed because they included so many cheat codes that it's almost like the game came pre-installed with mods, with nearly a hundred cheat codes that when printed in standard font was over four pages long. Matter of fact, I think I even still have my original cheat code pages printed from GameFAQs kicking around somewhere, along with my maps that I used when collecting all the collectibles. But I'd have to tear my room apart looking for them, so you have to take my word for it. Speaking of GameFAQs, it's worth pointing out that every website I went to had an incomplete cheat list. Every website had at least one cheat that I was looking for not present. Get your sh** together cheat compilation websites. You can tell they were just having fun because many of these cheat codes went far beyond the point of QA testing. You could pretty much alter every aspect of the game to some degree, from the purely mundane cheats of giving you health and ammo, to altering aspects of the game such as making cars fly, to spawning a whole smorgasbord of different vehicles, to full tilt game-wide alterations. The choices were endless. Some of these cheats I used so often that the inputs are forever burned into my brain like a hot branding iron. Triangle triangle square circle x l1 l1 down up spawned a hydra jet, circle right circle right left square triangle up locked your wanted level, though I only used that during my first playthrough when I was 11. 
R1, R2, L1, R2, left, right, down, up, and then some combination of four more inputs would spawn one of three different weapon sets, then swap the second R2 input with an X, and then hit left, down, right, up twice, and that'll give you health, money, and armor. Those are just the practical cheats that an 11 year old might memorize in order to get through the game quicker, but there are tons of cheats that you can activate that don't benefit you gameplay wise, but create hours upon hours of stupid fun. Back at this point, they couldn't do vehicle crushing physics, so tanks in this game would simply make other cars explode on impact. Something we took for granted at the time, but it is in hindsight kind of weird. But if you want to turn any car or any vehicle into a tank in this sense, you gotta cheat for that. So you can rampage down Main Street, causing infinite amounts of chaos in your wake. Or you know how you can recruit gang members to fight by your side? Well, you're kind of limited for most of the game because you can only recruit your own gang members who only exist in Los Santos, and you're also limited by your respect stat. But if you'd like to recruit anybody off the street and have them all armed with a 9mm pistol or even a rocket launcher, and have the default number of people allowed to join you be the maximum, there's a cheat for that. Like seriously, you can recruit like 12 random people all with rocket launchers and then shoot a single person and watch the chaos unfold. I don't think there's a single vehicle in the game that can hold this many people. Maybe there's a small handful, but it can't be more than like two or three. The Cars Fly Cheat is another one that I spent hours playing around with back in the day. The car's flight physics aren't great, they're a bit hard to control, but this was where it was at back in the day. There's something so innately zen about just flying around like Harry Potter. The most hilarious part was how they would give you money because this counted as a stunt jump. Another fun one would be that 100 foot bunny hop. Now that's a super bunny hop if I ever saw one. It becomes a game in itself just seeing how many tricks you can do in a single jump. I could do this for hours, it's so absurd but so weirdly fun. Relatedly, you have the super jump, which will have you jump a full story in the air. It doesn't really have any practical application other than allowing you to jump up to higher ledges, but the absurdity alone makes it worth it. Or how about this? Have you ever played the burglary side mission, but get frustrated at the fact that you only have something like 8 minutes in in-game day to play it? So there are so many houses far away that you'll never be able to rob? Well, there's a cheat for that. Several, in fact. You can lock the time of day to several points and have an endless night for stealing stuff. Then there's the cars float away when hit cheat, which, I mean, look at it. How could you not love that? And for somebody like me who couldn't beat the game until playthrough number 4, these vehicle spawn cheats were a godsend, allowing me to see the vehicles that were either late game or only available in a handful of missions. I mean, some of these do spawn around the map in very obscure locations, but it's so much easier just to spawn them. Like the slippery as hell to use hovercraft, or the hydra jet, or the hunter helicopter, which I believe is only available in free roam if you 100% flight school, which is a pain in the ass. The quad bike is also a fun one, especially when you try to make it fly. For whatever reason, this one can fly, but it's very difficult. It has very little weight, so it quickly loses control whenever you try and get it off the ground. But I love this thing, and I hate that it only shows up in a single mission to my memory. Or how about the monster truck, which only shows up in a single mission, and you can only get it in free roam by winning one of the side activities in the arena in Los Santos. Then there's the jetpack. Let me be clear here, I first played this game in 2008, so I believe I was 11 at the time. I was used to things like Spider-Man Friend or Foe, or Tomb Raider Legend. That was my point of reference for what gaming was like at the time. So I was still very new to the idea of games not only being capable of having a free roaming aspect, but that these aspects could stretch into the absurd. I'd never seen a game be able to include a full on jetpack, and this game already had more freedom than I had ever experienced. So when I saw that you could spawn an actual factual jetpack, no strings attached, I'd have probably creamed myself if I knew what that meant at the time. And I can't stress this enough, it was exactly what I wanted. Basically, to a starry-eyed kid like I was back in the day, these spawning cheats let you skip the line and see all the wonderful things that you couldn't get unless you put a stupid amount of effort in. And trust me, I know from experience just how long this game takes to 100%. On the playthrough when I finally got through the glass ceiling and played through to the end of the game for the very first time, I decided to 100% the game because I didn't feel the game had earned its parole just yet. But even with cheats and guides, it still took me an extra 40 to 50 hours. So just the ability to play around with all the toys at any given time is extremely good for people who want to experience all the corners of the game but don't have the time or patience to do so. Although not every toy is available via cheat. 
For example, the hot knife car, which is only available by gold meddling every single thing in the driving school, which is an even bigger pain in the ass than flying school, but there's no cheat to specifically access this one car. However, you can still access it through cheats, but in a bit of a roundabout way. If you activate the Clown World cheat, which will make everybody look ridiculous, including CJ, the hot knife car will spawn as a regular car. So you can drive it around in all its ultra-fast glory, but you also have to deal with everything looking a bit absurd. Also, if you activate the Pedestrian Riot in conjunction with this cheat, I mean, that's totally Sweet Tooth. This is one of the handful of total world-changing cheats, so you can make everything Yakuza-themed, Elvis-themed, Beach-themed, or even Hillbilly-themed. You know, if you're sick of having decent cars spawn and want to feel what life is like in rural Alabama. And everything I've gone over so far is just a handful of the cheats available. I guess the real appeal of this, aside from adding a bit more to the longevity of the gameplay, is that this is a series that's always been built on anarchic chaos. The progenitor of the gameplay model where if you're bored, you can just start a massacre. And this adds so much variety to potential massacres, and there's no way to say that without sounding like a complete maniac, but it's true. The novelty of starting a massacre at random will only get you so far, but all this increases the potential fun tenfold, both for massacres and otherwise. It's something that I don't think any game has truly done better than this. Plus, if you ask me, there's also an undeniable novelty to playing through a game and getting access to something that doesn't necessarily belong in the game, or at least the genre. Like, am I crazy for thinking that there's a strange appeal to having a monster truck in a game that isn't specifically a monster truck game? Or how about having a jetpack in a game that isn't specifically a jetpack game? And hey, in that case, I'm also praising aspects of the critical path as well as the cheats. But with the cheats, they give you access to these things, no strings attached. And of course, there are cheats that give you access to gameplay elements not found in the core game, like the super punch turning you into a superhuman, or the unlimited ammo cheat having the side effect of making the rocket launcher rapid fire. It creates games within a game. But to me, there's always been an extra bit of anarchy to play around with when it comes to the cheats in this game. It's fun to activate a single cheat, but what's more fun is activating a combination of cheats that absolutely uproots the entire game. Here are some of my favorites. So here's the thing, if you activate the Pedestrian Riot cheat, which takes the Los Santos Riot from the last part of the game and makes it a game-wide thing, and then combine it with the Super Punch which kills people in one hit, making them go flying, and then of course activate infinite health so that you don't die in one hit, you can sit back and watch the chaos unfold as everyone runs up to each other and punches each other into oblivion. The only thing that would make this better is ragdoll physics, so I would have to look into modding that into the PC version, making this even better. But seriously, just walking down the street and watching everyone go flying around like children caught in a tornado? That's priceless. Okay, so the Cars Fly cheat is already fun to play around with by itself, especially when you make the NPC cars freak out so that they fly away, especially when you're on top of the car. But it gets better if you activate the Aggressive Drivers cheat and the Traffic Lights Stay Green cheat, at which point they'll pretty much be permanently driving quickly and therefore flying completely out of control. This is especially great if you hang out on the freeway. If you activate the Cars Float Away When Hit cheat and the Cars Fly cheat, you can lightly tap cars and then they'll zoom away like futuristic hover cars. But that's not the best part. If you manage to lightly tap a vehicle and then get into the vehicle, you can actually go far beyond the height limits of the game. As a matter of fact, it was the only way I could do this back during the days of the PS2. Also, the best vehicle to do this with, in my opinion, would be the train, because if you derail that thing, it never stops. In fact, you can't even get out unless you activate the cheat that immediately depletes your health. If you activate all the car-based cheats at once, it'll give you a vehicle that's completely unstoppable, and that's pretty cool. If you activate the All Pedestrians Are Gang Members cheat, followed by the Recruit Anybody cheat, you can have an entire gang filled with turncoats. If 
If you activate the Recruit Anybody with Rocket Launchers cheat, then activate a 6-star Wanted level, the activation will cause a full-scale destructive fight between cops and criminals, the likes of which have never been seen. <laughs> Okay, so basically, if you activate any cheat in conjunction with the cheat that speeds the game up, and activate that cheat multiple times, it makes everything slightly more amusing. Especially back in the day, because on the PS2, this game was running so fast, it couldn't keep up. It was great. Now, of course, it was really cool to have all these cheats, but with that said, they did come with a bit of a risk. They warn you that every time you save the game, you may have unforeseen issues if you use cheats. And trust me, I experienced that all too well growing up. The very least of it was cars exploding twice. That was an acceptable sacrifice and a bit funny to boot. But my game had the tendency of soft locking itself if I used too many cheats. As I hinted at earlier, this happened to me as a kid for three playthroughs in a row. During my first playthrough, I used over 700 cheats, including the pedestrian riot cheat at one point. Yo, is that The Undertaker? And he has a shotgun. It says you can't turn off this cheat, and trust me, they're not kidding. You can technically turn it off, but some NPCs will still act weird towards you for the rest of the game. Like, hot dog vendors will randomly attack you, but the worst part is it activates some sort of coding glitch which will make the mandatory mission Mad Dog completely unbeatable, because it will make the fail state happen almost immediately, and then for my subsequent playthroughs, I didn't cheat as much, but I still occasionally used cheats, and that caused the game to soft lock, because after a certain point, I was supposed to get a call that would activate the mission St. Mark's Bistro. Never came. It wasn't until my fourth playthrough that the game finally acquiesced and let me beat the game. And those four playthroughs happened over the course of two years. Personally, I don't know enough about coding to understand why something that was programmed into the game can make the game itself glitch out, and when I say that, I mean glitch out in a way that wasn't already present in the game. Because yeah, something included in the game glitching out, that's kind of what glitching out means. But unfortunately, it meant that cheating in this game did come with its risks. Although the irony is, after I beat the game on the fourth try using no cheats, I then decided to activate a few cheats that would speed along my progress, maxing out all my stats because I didn't have time to max out all my stats with every gun and every type of vehicle. I mean, who the hell would? You don't get access to aircraft until like two-thirds of the way through the game, and even if you do sneak into an airport and fly around until you level up enough that you'll be able to access the airports regularly, that still takes quite a bit of time flying around aimlessly to get your flying stat up. Not fun. And if you're not willing to do that, I mean, every city has an airport. So they're just teasing you. But I still can't possibly do justice to all the cheats in this game. They have cheats for every occasion and most uses. Something you really don't get all that much in gaming anymore. In some ways, I do think that gaming is better than it's ever been. Thanks to indie gaming becoming such a big thing, we basically have more variety than ever before. Even AAA gaming is significantly better off variety-wise than it was during the era where everything wanted to be Uncharted or Call of Duty, with a few Arkham clones sprinkled in here and there. But the loss of cheat codes is a genuinely big loss for gaming. You still see them here and there, but they used to be in almost every game and were part of the culture. Kids these days I'm sure have a lot of things they will eventually look back on and think, man, I miss that. But still, it sucks that they won't ever be able to experience that sublime joy of typing in a code and suddenly something surreally wacky happens that completely breaks the tone of the game. Or enhances it in some cases. And there's no reason that games can't do this, but I'm glad to see that, for all their many faults, Rockstar Games is still upholding the tradition. I guess it still remains to be seen if Grand Theft Auto 6 will keep that streak going, because lord knows when that game's coming out. And besides, it's not like Rockstar Games hasn't been a complete trash fire of a company for a decade at this point. A profitable trash fire, but a trash fire nonetheless. So lord knows if they're even going to uphold their tradition at this point, or if they're gonna hide it behind a paywall or something. Oh god, I hope I didn't give them an idea. If you like what I do here and want to support the channel, you can like this video, leave a comment telling me what you think, subscribe, and hit the notification icon so you're always up to date on what I'm doing. Let me know what your favorite cheat is in GTA San Andreas in the comment section below. And if you want to support the channel in a more direct fashion, you can pledge to my Patreon for unique perks and rewards, such as early access, Discord benefits, and exclusive content, along with these fine folks right here.
And an extra special thank you to users Andrew Ritter, Brooklyn, Dick Kickham, Gaw004, My Name is Tank, Knob Varley, Raf, Patchwork, Ranger X, Weird Webster, and Monsieur Tenadier for going above and beyond. Elsewise than that, I've been the King of Snark Style right here on Tactical Bacon Productions, and I will see you next time. Stay crispy, my friends.